Am I good? Yes. Feeling better already, ain't you? Yes. Uh, you've been three weeks without that bunch. Uh, you appreciate them? Yes. yes. Woo! All right, all right. What y'all want to do now? Listen to Jason. All right, all right. Well, here's what I'm going to try to do. I'm going to try to finish this. All right? No promises, but I'm going to try to finish this. We've been talking about for how long, uh, you know, understanding what love really is and who love really is and, and understanding that. And you say, Jason, why in the world have you been talking about that for so long? Uh, but, you know, here, and here's why I think it's the is single-handedly the most important, the most powerful, life-changing piece of information that you can uh, uh, understand is the love of God. How God loves you in the way that He loves you because really all of life itself is wrapped up into that truth. All of life itself is wrapped up in that truth. How we understand His love for us is how life is going for us. We've had messed up perceptions. Yep. We've been messed up thinking. We've we've had wrong ideas. Religions really taught us a lot of hooey, messed up stuff. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not blaming people. Religion is a spirit, and it's pro God, but it's anti Christ. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm just saying, um, religion will introduce you to God and keep you from Him. And so, I just, I just want to undo all what it's done and get the truth out there. And because I'm telling you, understanding how He really loves you is where life is really found. Because however you believe that, you've heard me say this. I'm telling over and over and over again. However you believe His love is for you is how you're loving. What's coming out of you is birthed out of the place of what you're understanding of about Him. See, that's why now you can have mercy for some of those old religious people. <laughs> meanest people you ever met. Yeah. You know why they're grouchy? Because they believe God's grouchy. You know why they're in a bad mood? Because they believe God's in a bad mood. Do you know why they hold you to a high standard and expect you to do this and that and everything the same exact way that they do? Because they believe God is holding them to that kind. However you believe about this is what you've got going on here. you got less to do with it than you think you do. So the level of your understanding is the level of your living. I, I would think what else is more important than to understand this then. Knowing Him, see? Knowing Him. Everything ought to be. Even singing the songs and, and reading this book or whatever we do with the goal of knowing Him. So you can do a lot. You can read this book every day for, for lots of purposes. To say, I'm going to read this book so I can learn more and I can prove I'm right about what I believe. Well, anybody? All right, not you guys, just me probably. Everybody ever open this up to prove you're right? Well, I guarantee you, if you, if you open this book with that kind of an attitude, you'll find some verse somewhere that you can twist around and make it seem and convince yourself that you're right about whatever. Anything. But what if we got humble and over our haughty selves and opened this book up with the attitude of, I just want to know Him. I don't know about you, I've got a whiff and I'm hooked on it and I want some more. I, I, want, I, I can't stop. I'm a, I'm, I'm a junkie. <laughs> and the more I got, the more I want and the more I get, the more I can see there is to have. And, and I, I'm big enough to say I, I, the more I know Him, the more I see that there is I don't know. <clears throat> All right. I'm going to try to finish this. Are everybody good? Right. Understanding love. Redefining what we think about love and, 
and who love is and all that. We went through all, all we went from the front of the book to the back of the book, right? And we've been in 1 Corinthians 13, the love chapter, and we went word for word and letter by letter, really. I don't even know how long I've been in it now. But I'm, I've gotten all the way down to verse 7. Alright, so here's what verse 7 says in my Bible. Talking about love, right? And we said, 1 John said that God is love, right? God is love. God is love. So if we said love is patient, we could also say God is patient, right? Alright, so it says this, verse 7, love, talking about love, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. All right? Here, I like the New Living Translation. I wrote that one down too. The New Living Translation says this. Love never gives up. Love never gives up. One translation says, instead of bears all, I believe it says covers. Covers. The word bears all there means covers. Covers all. Covers all things. Same word there where he said, love covers a multitude of sins covers all things. Look, New, Trans New Living Translation said this, love never gives up. Well, if I could say love never gives up, I could say God never gives up. Mm -hmm. Now that, that sounds like a common phrase, don't it? But, but we really not believe that. God never gives up. Never gives up. Never quits. I think it's why he likes cowboys. He kind of hard-headed that way. Ain't letting go. Never gives up. You can see it in the life of Jesus, right? I mean, Jesus is the exact representation of the Father, Hebrews said, right? If you Jesus himself said, If you've seen you mean you've been with me all this time? And if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. That means you can't. Uh, have a belief system that thinks one way about God that's contrary to what shows up in the life of Jesus. Right? Jesus don't give up. He ain't giving up on you. Now you can say, yeah, that's right. He's not going to give up on Aaron. You can say about somebody that's running from God and not even been born again or whatever else. I, okay, I'm talking about that too. But I'm also talking about he doesn't give up. He, he's not given up on you, say you might have had a calling in your life at one time and, and you really messed things up and you got way off and this and that. Now you've just settled with, well, maybe I can get into heaven. I'm, I'm a Christian, whatever, but He can never use me again. <laughs> I got news for you. The more messed up you are, never gives up. I mean, He never gives up. we got to we got to see it in Jesus. We've got to think it about the Father, too. Can you imagine the way we think? I mean, Jesus, here He is getting going, you know, getting ready to be crucified on the cross. And here He's been on through. He's been through, you know, and, and beat Him. Unrecognizable. Is that He was marred worse than any man had ever been marred. Unrecognizable. And here He is going. Then He has to carry the cross up there. Can you imagine? He gets almost there and He finally is just like, you know what? Forget it. <laughs> Just forget it. I mean, if they're not going to see now, I, all I've done, I've healed them, I, I've given sight to the blind, I've fed them when they were hungry, I've blessed them, I've taught them, I've loved them, I, I've opened deaf ears, I've done all this, nothing but good, and they still don't see. Now, now they're doing this. I mean, I, forget it. Angels, come on. Come get me. All right? It sounds ridiculous coming out of Jesus, doesn't it? But we've thought God's that way. No, he's, he, he's, he laid there on the cross. And just before he gave up the ghost, he said, forgive them. Because I just don't know. I say God said, they don't know yet. <laughs> I'm not giving up on you. I don't care where you're at or what you've been in or what you're going through. Love does not give up. Alright? You're still in the game. 
That's right. That's right. Ne love never gives up, comma. Never loses faith. Never loses faith. How about, you know, they say that about God. God never loses faith. You're talking about love. How, that's kind of a weird thought, ain't it? God never loses faith. Why would even God need faith? What, what is faith? I mean, we've spent how many hours talking about that? They say, I'm going to believe something that I'm not yet seeing with my eyes. Well, I'd say there's still some stuff in me. That He believes about me that I don't even know about myself yet. He's believing something in you that He's not seeing with His eyes yet. Guess what? You ain't all the way there. Guess what? I ain't all the way there. I got lot. I got lots of room to grow yet. I'm. I ain't even. We ain't even scratched the surface. We're. We're getting there. We're going somewhere. But he's going to keep on believing in me, believing in you. He ain't giving up. He's going to keep believing. He's going to keep believing in you and keep speaking it into you until you start becoming what it is that He believes about you. <laughs> Man, that's good stuff. I'm, I'm trying to get... See, we can believe that about each other easier than we can believe that about God. <coughs> Never loses faith. Never loses faith. Never gives up. Mm -hmm. is always hopeful. Always hopeful. I think those two right there are kissing cousins. Never loses faith is always hopeful. And we've hope, hopeful, hope full of hope, right? We went back and said this a while back, hope is not, well, I wish this would happen. Right? We watered hope way down to, well, I'm hoping so. Like maybe, maybe not. Right? No. It's a... It's the positive expectation that it's on its way. I hope means it's coming. It's coming, right? Well, that, now you know why faith never loses faith. Because I have hope. Two work, work off of each other. Right? Got hope. Never loses hope. Love never loses hope. Alright? And listen to this. And endures... Through every circumstance. This is New Living Translation. Endures through every circumstance. You know why? Because it's not gathering its truth from circumstances. Love is not gathering its truth from its circumstances. Love is not gathering its truth from how you're acting today. Versus yesterday. Love's not gathering its truth from how things are going. What things look like right now. Endures through every circumstance. I've told this story a long time ago. I haven't told it for a while. But I was thinking about this when I was chewing on these verses for all week really. But I, th I told this about uh, a guy who came home from work, right? And he beat his wife home from work one day. And he got in there and he thought, you know what? I'm going to get in there and I'm going to show her how much I love her. I'm going to wash these dishes up for her. Pop, you know, dishes there from breakfast, whatever. Everybody rushes out, you know how we do. You know, he gets in there and he washes and dishes up good. He just gets carried away and he's cleaning the kitchen. I mean, he's got her shine. Right? He's proud. Right, guys? Hmm? <laughs> And so for long here she comes in, she's had kind of a rough day, she kicks her shoes off, so stuff down, you know, and comes in. She goes in and goes in goes to the bathroom and I don't know, whatever you gals do and she's then doing and, and so she didn't she didn't even notice the kitchen, you know. So he's kinda you know, he's anxious and he's waiting, watching, and, you know, he's like this is gonna be really good, she's gonna be happy about this, you know. And so evening goes on, or she She's wore out from the day, gonna keep time, keeps going on. She still ain't noticed, you know. So now he's kind of, you know, uh, you know how, I'm, right? So, and then so, t you know, keeps going. I'm getting myself in trouble. You gotta be careful. 
So poor old Evening's going on now. He's about he's about stood it as long as he can stand it, right? Said she ain't even noticed this. Now now I ask himself, why did he wash the dishes? He said he washed the dishes because he loved her. If he washed the dishes because he loved her, there wouldn't have been a need for some sort of response. I'm talking about the love of God and the love that we thought was like God. But say we have saying, well, I'm going, you know, she's going to have to notice, and she's going to appreciate me, and I'm going to get some points out of this, and and we've called that love. The love of God says this: I'm going to wash the dishes for her, whether she ever notices it. I'm going to wash the dishes for her if she comes in and spits in my face. I'm going to wash the dishes and keep washing the dishes if she thumbs her nose at me and doesn't speak to me for 50 years. I'm still going to be here washing the dishes. Oh, that's too radical, ain't it? I've seen it. I've seen old people on their deathbed that have thumbed their nose at God for their whole life, 80, 90, 100 years old, and in their last breaths cry out to a merciful God. And He rushes in there like a... Yes. I'm telling you, we got to redefine the way we think about what love is. We'd say, well, yeah, but gosh, God, you're embarrassing yourself a little bit. He ain't had nothing to do with you. He ain't tied one time. Right? We think like that. I remember you guys know Penrod that sits over there. He's 90 now. He's, he's got to where he don't come and can't climb upstairs. But anyway, you, you guys know him. Old Penrod sits over and taps the cup. You guys know what I'm talking about? It, his, he lost his wife a while back, I don't, a few years ago now. Time gets away, but he's not a church guy. You know what I mean by that? He's as good as they come, and he knows God. But he never was really a church guy until he came here. And so his wife, I don't know what all she has. She was in a nursing home, and uh, for the last five years of her life. She did not even know who he was. And every single day, he took her little dog, went up there to the nursing home, and sat with her, and ate lunch with her, and talked to her, and spent, let the dog spend time, and all, all this stuff. Five years. Five years. And she did not even know who he was. That's love. That's someone else becoming more important than you are. The one of he did not receive a thing from her for the last five years of her life. And he went every single day. I'm gonna tell you something, man don't come up with that kind of love. Mm -mm. And then the very first part of the next verse says this. That kind of love never fails. That kind of love never fails. Never fails. I don't know about you, I want I want I want that. Mm -hmm. And I want it so much so that it wouldn't just be that much love for my family. where everyone becomes family. Here's, here's, here's how we're going to do that. Set you up to start with. We're not going to do that. We're not going to learn that, figure out how to achieve that, perform that. You can't come up with it. We're going to have to continue to transform our minds 
to understand that that's how He is. That His love is not based on conditions. That He has even that, the best that words can come up with and experiences and stories that I know to even try to describe it, still don't hold a candle to it. The way that He loves. It's more than our minds can wrap around. But to continue to at least want to grasp it and get a hold of it and hunger for it and seek after it and search for it and, and want it to understand Him in that way. That's how we start becoming that. I hear? Yes. It says this, Paul wrote Romans, the goodness of God leads man to repentance. Now you know by now that repentance don't mean run to the front and cry and say you're sorry. It means to change. It means to change. The goodness of God is what brings about change. And it's not just the automatic goodness. It's when it becomes perceived and when it becomes understood and, and it becomes received. Receiving His goodness. Allowing Him to be as good as He wants to be is what brings about change in us. Hello? I say just be as good as you want to be. Go on, bless me. If that makes you happy and it brings about change, I'll go on. I'll be blessed. You know, that's the way God. That's the way love thinks. When you experience how good I am, you'll be changed by that. Anybody still need change? Yes. Yeah. The enemy. You guys will sing something if you want to. Huh? Listen to this. The enemy has come up with this and religion, he's used religion to get our mind frames to the place that we have to qualify for God to be good. Oh yeah, he can, but we're not sure if he's willing or if I've done this or not done that or maybe if I get this right. Right? Hey, if you never step foot in a church, you still have that kind of thinking. Put that in us so we'll qualify ourselves and disqualify ourselves from the blessing of God. Because in that place we won't receive and we won't experience change. You with me? Yeah. Just go and let God be good. Because that's how change is going to come about. Just go on and be healed. You don't have to qualify for it or deserve it. Woo! He qualified you. I just happen to think if He took my sin and there's none on our account, then the effects of it ought to be gone too. Sickness and disease are the effects of sin. If he took my sin, then the effects got to go too. You hear me? Yes. I'm just saying be healed. Anybody checked yet? Anybody been healed tonight? I'm expecting it. Hmm? All right, I don't want to know about it. I don't get healed here and be selfish. I don't want to know about it. Am I good? Yes. All right, I love y'all. I love you. Let God love you. Don't go do love, just be loved. Alright? Alright, see you next Thursday. Love you. Love you.